How do I even explain what this does? This looks like something designed by AI, and not just because it has meaningless buttons on it. This PCB has several things happening on it, but it's really a bunch of separate prototyping sections. Thanks to PCB Way for sponsoring this research and development project. I'll get one of these populated with parts, but we can start with the card edge for now. I wanted to make something similar to a PC 16-bit expansion bus card. So on AliExpress, I bought a couple of these separate card edge connectors. So I wired up two sockets, one-to-one, -one, all the pins, along with the card edge. I plug this in, and it fits perfectly for the spacing, and it stays in with a tight fit. I can get continuity from the card edge finger all the way through the contacts and up to the corresponding pin on the header over here. So now I know if I want to design a card edge connector and use it with sockets, I can follow this as a template. Another thing I wanted to try was using these four pin magnetic pogo pin connectors. The way these work when they are not lined up with the magnetic polarity properly on the sides for each connector, they want to repel, they go off to the side. If I flip one around, they'll just go find each other instantly. So they are polarized. I have to keep that in mind when connecting them to a board. And of course, for stability, I would want at least something in the opposite corner, if not all four corners. So I have footprints for the magnetic connector down in all the corners, just arbitrarily thrown in. And what I want to do with that is, if I can figure a way, I want USB power and data on one base plate connecting up to a computer. The other board might have something like a USB module. So they are removable boards. You bring them together, they snap together, and we get a module having USB capabilities. A lot of the stuff on here doesn't connect anywhere. It's just footprints so that I can hold parts on and then manually wire it up. So if I need buttons for something like reset or a GPIO test input, I can put a button here, wire it over to maybe some of these headers, which are this combination of odd single row pins beside each other. And that is so that I can take various things with USB. For example, a Pi Pico can plug into female headers if I put those there. Various other ESP-based modules that can go there. Wemos D1 Mini style thing. Pro Micro. So depending how wide the module is or how long the module is, this is just a combination of headers to be able to just place something and hold it here for testing. These large holes here are just for possible mounting or even alignment. For example, if this board is going to be in motion to go toward the docking board, maybe I want some sort of alignment tool hole so that this can't really deviate from here. And I have one on each corner, so it keeps it in a position, stuff like that. These holes in the center should be exactly in the center of the board, and that's for a T8 nut. So you put that there and use that if I want to move the board up and down for my test platform for docking and releasing. So I used a mechanical drawing of the T8 nut, and I figured out the drill diameters and the placement, and everything lined up. Here's the assembled board with this stepper nut installed. Through the card edge connectors. So, that's how those would go. And of course, it needs, just like a computer expansion card, it needs some sort of a metal bracket to keep it steady. But electrically and mechanically, for this purpose, that was successful. On the bottom, there's the USB pogo pin magnetic connector. And it turns out the mounting 
pins on this are not long enough to go through a standard thickness board. So I had to make sure I put a lot of heat down in there when connecting this, but it's okay for prototyping. So the idea is the base plate board is only going to have the mating pogo connector and I took a spare USB cable cut the end off and just directly wired it to the pogo pins on that base plate so I can plug that to the computer then this will dock to it being pulled down by a stepper until it docks then I have a nano module with a simple sketch in there so that when it connects up with USB power it will just send some text over the serial port so I can just see it in a terminal and make sure all of this works. This just needs to sit here mechanically. It only needs the USB connection and there's a USB connector here. If this pogo pin is docked to the base plate and it's plugged into a computer, we will get USB power and data coming on the board to this header going through a USB mini through the cable to the USB C nano and then it can do its serial port test text back through the base plate out to the computer and I can see that this worked. I'll lay this aside. It actually makes a good paper weight to hold this down. So this represents the pogo pins for USB power and data but USB is supposed to have longer power pins so they make connection first when you're plugging in a cable then data gets connected for hot plugging purposes. But with these pogo pins, they're all the same size. So I had to try to come up with a way to simulate hot plugging. It's not necessarily perfect or technically in any sort of USB spec, but I'm just trying to test concepts. So the very first thing I'm doing here, this is a T3 USB 30 two-way USB data switch. So data pins plus and minus are here and you can use a control signal to switch the data between two different pads. So I'm taking USB from the pogo pins and I'm just sending it to one path, which is this header to go to a USB mini cable. The reason I'm using this is so that I can have a high impedance between my USB device and the USB bus until I'm ready to officially connect it. So this magnetic connector docks, but I don't have data connected to my module yet. This chip supports partial power down mode, which puts the data pins in high impedance if you power the chip down. So this could be zero volt power while some other stuff is powered up on the board, and these are high impedance. The V bus and ground coming from the pogo pins go up here to this power supply circuit. So here's 5 volt USB, and this is a TPS2001 load switch where it will take the USB 5 volts and put a slight delay on it as it ramps up gradually to provide the normal 5 volt rail for the board. So this helps handle things like inrush current here. If something on this board is going to draw too much current and you don't want that to draw too much from USB directly, this chip will allow anything like onboard capacitors to charge up gradually and not burden the rest of the bus. So after this rail ramps up, this will provide 5 volt power to the USB module I have plugged in. And there's also a 3.3 volt regulator here, which powers this USB switch. So then this powers up and enables the data path here. So the module plugged in should get 5 volt power and then a path for data, simulating plugging in a cable directly with power connecting first. Although this is high impedance when this is not powered, at the time this is powering up or powering down, the output enable here should be set to guarantee this stays high impedance when plugging or unplugging. For now, I'm just keeping it fully enabled as long as the chip has power. But to do it fully, maybe in the future, I've got this sketch drawn in. Maybe I'd want something like a 3.3 volt reset supervisor so that it will control that enable based on when 3.3 volt power is available or has dropped down. So hopefully that would cover all situations. The chip being fully powered, no power, powering up or powering down, and having these data pins correctly enabled or high impedance. 
So with all of that docking, this should power this up, then connect the data pins similar to hot plugging a cable. I mocked up this little test jig. You should have seen the prototype. So I have a stepper with a little manual direction control from a previous project, and I can use that to just make sure this thing will move up and down, which it seems to be doing just fine. So now I'm going to bring this to a computer and plug in the base plate to the USB port, then let this dock and see if the serial monitor is getting the text output.